Here it's a baby shower gift. Feel free to use it. My MIL handed over a bundle of baby clothes, a present for my newborn daughter. It was wrapped neatly, and I accepted it with a smile. Once my MIL left, I promptly opened the gift with my husband. The moment I saw what was inside, I threw it directly into the trash. Hey, that's a gift. What are you doing? My husband was upset, but his face turned pale as I explained why, immediately, he stormed out to go to his mother's house. My name is Karen Anderson. I am currently 27 years old and work at a specialty suit shop. I met my husband Rick at my place of work where he was a customer. I fell in love with his fervent attention to choosing his suits. Rick, on the other hand, appreciated the detailed explanations I gave him for each suit. On the day he collected his custom-made suit, Rick told me he wanted to see me again. From then on we went out several times and got to know each other better. Two months later, we started dating and formed a relationship where we both push each other to grow. When I visited Rick's place for the first time during our relationship, I noticed his room was very clean. Wow, for a bachelor, you keep your place remarkably clean, Rick. It, it takes a lot of effort to maintain this. Rick responded without boasting or being overly excited. Well, I have some past traumas. I could tell from his face that he didn't want to delve deeper into the topic, so I didn't ask further. As I was looking around his room, Rick hesitantly asked me, Do you keep your place clean, Karen? I need to be with someone who likes cleanliness. That was a side of Rick I hadn't seen before that, well, I'm not sure how much cleaning qualifies as clean, but my place is not messy. Good. That's a relief. Rick seemed really relieved. At that time, since we had just started dating, I took his preference for cleanliness lightly. As we continued to date, I got to know Rick better. About two years after we started dating, Rick made a promise to me on the way home from a date. Our next date will be our two-year anniversary. Let's have a dinner at a restaurant. Yes, I can't believe it's been two years already. I am looking forward to it. With that promise, we parted ways for the day. On the day of our next date, while we were dining at the restaurant, Rick seemed restless and nervous. When I asked him if he was feeling unwell, he said he was fine. As I grew concerned, Rick suddenly surprised me. Karen, will you marry me? I hadn't expected a proposal, so I was taken aback. Seeing Rick's restlessness earlier made sense now, and I joyously said yes. The customers and staff around us clapped, and Rick turned beet red from joy. Blushing, we both left the restaurant, and it was a moment we both remember fondly. A few weeks later, we began the preparations for our marriage and visited both families to announce our engagement. Should we go to Rick's house first? When I suggested this, Rick, slightly flustered, responded, Can we wait a bit before visiting my folks? Let's go to your parents' place first. Okay, if you say so. Rick quickly changed the plan I proposed. I didn't care much about the order in which we'd make our greetings, so I didn't really mind. And so we decided to visit my parents' house first. When we arrived at my parents' house, they had prepared lunch for us. Welcome, Rick. I've heard about you from Karen. Please eat as much as you want. Rick, feel at home. No need to be formal. Thank you. My parents were welcoming towards Rick. By coincidence, Rick shared a hobby with my dad, so by the time we left, they had really bonded. I had been worried about an uncomfortable atmosphere before we went, but seeing Rick and my parents laughing and chatting, I felt relieved. Come back anytime. Thank you. We will visit again. We left my parents' house before evening. It ended up taking longer than we had planned, so we didn't have time to go to Rick's parents' house. I wanted to visit your parents too, Rick. Is it okay if we go tomorrow? Yeah, no problem at all. Don't worry about it. Rick looked somewhat relieved. I had been noticing small changes in Rick's expressions and actions, so I finally asked, You've been putting off going to your parents' house. Is there something you're hiding? You've been putting off going to your parents' house. Is there something you're hiding? When I asked him directly, Rick visibly tensed up and looked at me. He had been evading the question for a while, but he finally resigned himself to explaining, Actually, my house is old and the rooms are filled with stuff, my mom has a hard time throwing things away. It was better when my dad was around. But since he passed away five years ago, the house has been full of things. I try to clean up each time and help with the cleaning, but it doesn't really improve. I was afraid 
that if I brought you there, you might be turned off. So I kept putting it off. Oh, so that's it. I thought your mother was opposed to our marriage. I don't care what your house looks like. I finally understood why Rick had asked if I was a clean person a while ago, and why he kept delaying the visit to his parents. I had been worried that I was disliked, so I was relieved to know that wasn't the case. To reassure Rick I continued, in fact I'm good at tidying up so I'll go and help. In fact I'm good at tidying up, so I'll go and help. Seeing that I wasn't at all taken aback, Rick finally showed a smile. Thank you Karen. It's a relief to hear you say that. Rick promised we would visit his parents the following day at noon. When the day came we headed for his parents' house. When we arrived, the exterior of the house didn't look too concerning. Rick unlocked the door and let us in. I thought Rick was exaggerating but once inside it was indeed cluttered with items. The house was, to put it kindly, not clean. Various items were scattered around and it seemed that even trash had not been disposed of. Just left as it was, there were piles of trash in the hallways, and I felt that it would be disastrous if they fell over. I carefully followed Rick. Then Rick headed to the kitchen and called his mother. Mom, I brought my fiancé. Oh, you're already here. I'm just fixing dinner. So why don't you wait in the living room for a bit? With that, they were guided to the living room. Looking around, the living room table was still cluttered with papers and what seemed like yesterday's dishes. All left untouched, Rick noticed the state of the table and began to clean up aghast. I'm really sorry, Karen. Just sit down and wait for a bit while I clean this up. Rick tidied up and went to help his mother prepare. Unsure of what to do in this unfamiliar situation, Karen could only sit and wait, feeling awkward. Soon, Rick and his mother came into the living room. Nice to meet you. Sorry it's a bit crowded here, but I think you'll find the food tasty, so please help yourself. Nice to meet you. I'm Karen. I'm sorry for dropping in so suddenly. I'm looking forward to the meal. After quickly exchanging greetings before the meal, his mother handed me a plate and a pair of chopsticks. Looking at the chopsticks, they were clearly reused disposable ones. Rick also received a pair of used disposable chopsticks from his mother. As I was trying to understand if this was the norm, Rick noticed the chopsticks and was visibly upset. Ah, you're reusing disposable chopsticks again. If you want to reuse them, just do it for yourself. Karen must be uncomfortable too. Please bring clean chopsticks for the guests. Rick replaced my chopsticks with a new pair. I felt relieved at his intervention, but his mother seemed puzzled. They're clean, there's no problem, and we're all family here, not guests. His mother said this with a laugh. I was bewildered by the difference in values throughout. After finishing the meal, Rick suggested that they should leave early. You're leaving already? Karen dear, do come again. Let's have tea next time. Yes. I couldn't respond immediately and could only return a stiff smile. On the way home, Rick kept apologizing to me. I'm really sorry about my mom. I can speak up because I'm family, but I know it must have been hard for you, Karen. Don't worry about it, Rick. You told me about it beforehand, and the food was delicious. I'll go over to your mom's place next time and help her clean up. Rick kindly told me not to overdo it, but since it was Rick's mother, I also wanted to get along with her. I wanted to somehow help her M.I.L., who seemed unable to throw anything away for the sake of their future relationship. Two weeks later, I decided to coordinate with M.I.L. to help clean her house. In the days leading up to it, I studied from cleaning books, wanting to throw away as much unnecessary stuff as possible. Then the day came. If she makes any unreasonable demands, you must refuse. Okay? Don't hesitate to contact me, even if I'm at work. If something comes up... Yes, thank you. I understand. Rick saw me off with a worried look, and Karen went to his mother's house alone. Let's do our best today. Yes, let's give it our all. I first started to clean from the living room, and was gathering trash, when my Miles said to me, Oh, you don't have to throw that away yet. It's still good if you wash it. Saying so, she took the plastic convenience store lunchbox out of the garbage bag and placed it on the sink counter. Even the crumpled tissues that had been left aside, she insisted that the edges could still be used, and didn't throw them away. Mother-in-law, we'll never get to throw anything away at this rate. 
I tried to convince her and push for discarding some items, but she refused. I'll take care of the living room myself, my MIL declared and moved on to cleaning the bedroom. For now, let's sort out the clothes in the closet that you don't wear. I suggested this and started going through the clothes in the closet one by one, asking my Mayo about each piece. But here too, she picked up each item and began to recount her memories of the clothes. There are memories attached to it. I can't throw it away. T Besides, I might be able to wear it again if I lose some weight. And I won't throw this one away because it's my favorite brand. She made an excuse for every piece of clothing, and in the end, not a single item was thrown away. I asked her if there was anything at all that could be thrown away. Do you have anything that you don't use much? Well, I don't really use makeup tools much. She opened a drawer where makeup items were stored. And upon seeing the dust-covered lipstick and powder, she offered them to me. Karen, this lipstick color will suit you. I'll give it to you. She presented a half-used lipstick in front of me, likely untouched for decades. I was taken aback. We really can't use lipsticks that have been around for a few years. If you don't want it, let's throw it away. I tried to put it in the trash bag with a wry smile, but she brushed my hand aside and said, If you're gonna throw it away, I'll use it. After saying this, she put it back in the drawer. After that, we had the same sort of exchanges repeatedly, and I could feel my MIL gradually becoming more irritable. In the blink of an eye, it had turned to evening. I came here to help, but in the end, we didn't get any cleaning done. I'm sorry. That's okay. And Karen, you shouldn't throw everything away. You need to value things more. I was told in a slightly sarcastic tone by my MIL as I was leaving. I wanted to retort, but I held back and responded with a smile. When I got home, Rick had made dinner and was waiting for me. You're home already. Thank you for making dinner. Welcome back. Thanks for today. So how was it? Rick asked me with a little bit of expectation, but he seemed to understand when he saw my expression. I'm sorry, I couldn't get rid of anything, and ended up wasting the whole day. Well, it was the same when I went. With Mom's personality, it's hard to get rid of things. It seemed Rick too had had enough of his mother. I gave up on the idea of cleaning with my Amayo any further. After that, we tried as much as possible to avoid going to my in-law's house. And half a year later, I was blessed with my long-awaited first child, Rick. It seems I'm pregnant. I immediately reported the news, and we celebrated together. We decided to announce it to everyone once we reached the stable period. Since then, I had no morning sickness, and progressed smoothly into the stable period. I reported the news to my parents, my MIL, and also at work. Everyone was happy for us, and looking forward to meeting the baby. Our child will be cheerful and athletic, just like us, Rick. Maybe a bit of a mischief if they take after Rick. From time to time, we imagined what our child would be like and eagerly awaited the birth. Before I knew it, I was in my final month of pregnancy. Every day I thought our child might be born, living each day with anticipation. Even on my due date, I spent the whole day nervously. But there was no sign of labor. I wonder when this baby will come out. Must be a laid-back one. I talked to our baby who was yet to be born from within my belly, then went to sleep. But when I woke up in the middle of the night, I was in labor. Rick, wake up. I think I'm in labor. In a rush, I woke Rick up, and he started preparing for the trip, for the trip to the hospital. I was battling both the joy of soon meeting our child and the fear of labor pains. Even though he was woken up in the middle of the night, Rick quickly prepared and took me to the hospital. A few hours after arriving at the hospital, our daughter was born safely. Rick told me well done and held our daughter. He seemed moved and was teary-eyed as he gazed at our daughter. Karen, thank you so much. Rest well today. Rick said, comforting me with his words. We had decided to name our daughter Lily in advance. When I called Lily for the first time, I was very nervous but also filled with love. I felt like we could face anything as a family of three. Rick then made the birth announcement to my parents and MIL on my behalf. Gifts for the birth of our child started to pour in, and many people came to see Lily's face while I was hospitalized. My parents also rushed to the hospital. Karen, well done. This is Lily, right? She looks just like you and Vic. So adorable. We brought a gift for Lily's birth. 
but we'll bring it next time, as it would be a burden now. Thank you. They held Lily, played with her a lot. They recalled and talked about the time when I was born. I was deeply moved as my parents shared stories of my birth. I aspired to watch over my child with the same tender gaze as my parents did. In the evening after my parents had left, I received a call from my MIL. While I was in the hospital, she said she was unable to visit due to some engagements and would like to meet the baby at our home after I was discharged. I gladly agreed looking forward to her visit and hung up the phone. On the way home, in the car Rick had come to pick me up, and after being discharged, I received another call from my MIL. Sorry I couldn't come while you were in the hospital, Karen. Could I come see my grandchild's face next week? No problem at all. We'll be expecting you next week then. We made plans for her visit next week, and I informed Rick about it. Next week? Huh? I'm looking forward to it. We were happy to have many people coming to celebrate the birth of our daughter. Upon arriving home, being first-time parents, we both fumbled through childcare. Everything was a first-time experience for us, and giving Lily a bath was quite nerve-wracking. Babies sometimes spit up milk, which can dirty their necks, so we need to keep her clean. Right, we need to make sure she's thoroughly clean. Recalling what we learned at parenting classes before the birth, we worked together to care for Lily. Even with two adults caring for one small baby, it was hard work. Every three hours, we woke up to feed her or change her diaper, and the days flew by. A week went by and the day we promised to meet my MIL arrived. Around 10 a.m., my MIL arrived at our house. Sorry for the trouble of you coming all the way here. Please come in. I couldn't wait to see my grandchild's face and came early. I'll just let myself in. My MIL eagerly took off her shoes, and her steps towards the living room were light. As soon as she saw the grandchild, she joyfully picked her up. Oh, how cute Lily is. She reminds me of when Rick was little. Ma happily held Lily. Rick and I watched this with smiles on our faces as I was preparing tea. I'll give this to you while I remember. It's baby clothes. Please dress her in them if you'd like. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for bringing it all this way. Rick and I thanked her and accepted the gift. We had a pleasant chat with Amiel for about an hour, and she, considering my condition, left early. If I stay too long, it'll tire you out, won't it? Karen, I'll head home then. With those words, we said goodbye to Amiel. After seeing her off, Rick and I immediately opened the baby gift. As I excitedly took out the contents, I found myself feeling distinctly uncomfortable. Without a second thought, I threw it straight into the trash. Seeing my reaction, Rick was understandably upset. Hey, that's a baby gift. Why are you throwing it away? Rick, puzzled by my actions, retrieved the baby clothes from the trash. I stopped him and said, look closely at those clothes. Try? As he looked at the clothes in confusion, he didn't see anything strange at first. Strange at first, but just as he was about to ask me what I meant, he noticed something. Is it just me, or is the neckline yellowed? Exactly. And look at the tag. When Rick looked at the tag as I instructed, his eyes widened in surprise. Wait, this is a tag for adult size? And this brand? Yes, it's the brand that your mom loves. Considering the yellow neckline, I think she remade her own clothes into baby clothes. I immediately searched the characteristics of the clothes on my phone. The search results showed that the clothes matched an outfit from 20 years ago. It turned out that Mel had given us her 20-year-old, no longer worn clothes remade into baby clothes. The neckline was yellowed, and upon closer inspection, there were frayed threads and a hint of mildew. I was taken aback by M.I.L.'s actions. The thought of Lily wearing these clothes without us noticing the issues was terrifying. Rick seemed to feel the same way, and immediately rushed out of the house to confront his mom. Rick drove to Emil's house. His mill seemed to be parking her car, and Rick was able to find her outside her house. My mill must have sensed an unusual presence around her, because when she turned around, she saw Rick getting out of the car with a fierce expression. Rick, why such a scary face? She said, surprised by Rick's expression. What do you mean, why? You gave such a thing as a gift. Rick yelled at her loudly. People around them noticed the commotion and seemed to be listening from a distance. Gift. You mean the baby shower gift. It was a great idea. 
I bought it a long time ago, but since I don't wear it anymore, I remodeled it. It took longer than I thought, so I couldn't deliver it during your hospital stay. She replied in a tone that suggested she thought she should be appreciated for her effort. Give me a break. You can't expect us to put such dirty clothes on a newborn. You need to think things through. Rick reprimanded his mill, who didn't seem to understand yet. After raising his voice, Rick regained his composure and tried to explain the issue to his mill. Mom, the clothes are moldy and yellowed. We can't dress a baby who needs to be kept clean in those clothes. Oh, but it's fine because I washed them. She replied, failing to understand that a newborn's clothes and environment need to be kept clean. And she continued, Besides, it was very expensive at the time. Turning it into baby clothes takes a lot of courage. Can I get a little praise? She acted as though she had done nothing wrong, even suggesting she deserved gratitude. Rick felt it was pointless to say anything more to her and gave up on trying to make her understand. He had heard the same thing from her before, and the accumulated anger boiled over. Unable to contain himself, Rick raised his voice again in front of everyone. Do you have any idea how vulnerable children are? What were you planning to do if something happened to our child? Still enraged, Rick continued. And when we visited with Karen for our marriage introduction, it was embarrassing to have you behave like that in front of people outside the family. Do you know that one of the reasons I moved out as soon as I became a college student was because of you? I hated how you never knew your limits and tried to use everything. Rick began to reveal past issues. He hoped that hearing this might cause his mill to reconsider her actions. But her response was dismissive. I can't just throw things away because they're too precious, she said. Rick's words had not gotten through to her. Even though Rick tried hard to convey his message, her response exhausted his patience. Then fine. If you're going to be like that forever, stay out of our family's business. Rick said coldly to his mail. Taken aback by this, his mail desperately tried to stop Rick as he was about to leave. Wait a minute. I can't stand throwing things away or not being able to see my grandchild. She didn't intend to change her ways. I couldn't hold back and said, Mother... As Rick said, if anything happens to our child because of your inability to throw things away, I will regret it. So we won't see you anymore. And about the baby shower gift, we'll dispose of it ourselves. I said this and hung up the phone without waiting for her response. After that phone call, my mother-in-law Emil slumped down to the ground. I couldn't tell if the downtrodden look on her face was because her clothes had been thrown away or from the sadness of no longer being able to see Lily. People around her started whispering and gossiping about the situation. Then Rick came home and said to me, I'm really sorry for the trouble my mom's causing. If she won't change even after being told so much, we should stop seeing her from now on. Rick apologized and then gently patted Lily's head. Seeing that he was putting our child first, I felt relieved. From then on, we spent our time without meeting my mile. Apparently, my mile's inability to throw things away did not improve, but rather worsened. Garbage overflowed even to the front of her house, and it became notorious in the neighborhood as a nuisance. The children living nearby called it a hoarder's house and made fun of it. Apparently, the neighbors reported the situation to the authorities because it had become so bad. And then my Miles house received a warning from the authorities. Still, my Miles was unable to throw anything away, and she, she defiantly said that it's her house and she should be able to do as she likes. Once she no longer received warnings from anyone, my Miles started eating food ingredients of unknown purchase date, using makeup products that hadn't been used for a long time, and this led to skin troubles and health issues. She received advice from her doctor, but she ignored it, just saying it would be a waste. Despite experiencing the same problems over and over, she didn't listen to the doctor or the authorities, and finally, the authorities possibly started cleaning up the garbage. My MIL kept crying and pleading for them to stop, but the cleanup continued without a break, and then my MIL was charged for the cleanup costs. My MIL caused trouble to the neighbors, caused a ruckus in front of the house with her son, and was the talk of the town. She'll probably continue to live under scornful eyes. We kept our distance from such a MIL and lived peacefully with the three of us.
Around the time Lily turned one, I found out that I was expecting our second child. Rick, it looks like we're expecting our second child. Congratulations. Don't overdo it. Let's report to everyone once you reach the stable period. After entering the stable period, we reported the news to our relatives, friends, and workplaces. However, we did not report to my MIL about expecting our second child. She'll probably continue to live without any connection to our family. We also decided to live happily without her knowing, 